Mountain biking has a lot of distractions along the way. Things that can pull you away from doing what you set out to do. But one of the problems is if you don't navigate them well, you can get really hurt. Then enter in speed. <laughs> the speed that you encounter those distractions and your decisions need to happen quickly. And the consequences of your decisions goes up in all degrees and in all ways. Consequences of joy, consequences of other things. <laughs> Some distractions are a tight squeeze and only a few choices. Some distractions are competing things to avoid going over a ledge to a river or guardrail that isn't meant to help you. <laughs> I was riding with a member of the church the other day and they said, I'm glad you stopped. I was wanting to check out the view. This seasoned rider knows that if you want to look at one of the biggest distractions while riding, the view, that you stop. Gawking at the distractions while riding doesn't end well. There's this trail by my home that has a small but challenging section. It's a spine. You're riding the top of the ridge. It's rocky. And to top it all off, when you're going down, there's a drop. You can't really roll the drop, you have to send it, or get off and hike. One of the first times I rode down, I went OTB. But sometimes even going slow, or being tired, can mean that you have that much more time to look at the distractions. Sometimes, it just means it's hard to avoid them. Maybe you've even avoided them in the past, but not this time. Managing distractions is a part of mountain biking, and it is a huge part of our walk in faith. One of the common questions that I get in confirmation class is, what is the relationship between the first commandment and the rest of them? It's a good question actually comes up in the explanation in Luther's small catechism on the first commandment. What is the relationship between the first and the other commandments? How do we relate to them? I, me I remember hearing in confirmation class, if you've broken one, you've broken them all. And we have an explanation of this. We should fear, love, and trust in God above all things, and therefore gladly seek to keep all of His commandments, when we fear, love, and trust other things more than God, we break all the other commandments as well. So, the relationship between the first and the rest is that the rest of them are the distractions from the first. My number one priority in life is God. He's, he's number one. He's at the top of the list. Number two is my family, but there's actually an order in there. My bride is first in that grouping, and then my kids are uh, second in that grouping, so they're like 2.5. And then, and then my, the rest of my family, my, my parents and my sister, and then Edie's family, and they're all wrapped together as the second on the list. And the third is actually my job as pastor and then there's a whole bunch of of others that come down in the line mountain biking is down there golf is down there down further on the list but all of those things can easily be distractions for how i relate to god and so it takes time to learn how to starve distractions or when to stop and take in the view but how it doesn't become something that distracts from the first commandment here. Jesus says in Matthew chapter 6, verse 33, again, this is, we're learning how to use the small catechism. This is right here as a scripture reference. So we're not just getting ideas from theologians. We're getting God's word. And right here we're getting Jesus. Matthew 6, 33. But seek first the kingdom of God 
and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. Which sounds so simple and sounds so great and sounds so easy and we wonder how we can do this. Well, it, it takes time. It takes time to learn how to starve the distractions in your life, how to prioritize them when you stop to take in a view, when you stop to enjoy, when you stop to take care of the body, and when you prioritize your time with God. All of this takes practice. It doesn't just happen, much like any sport or discipline or craft or hobby. It doesn't just happen. It takes time. And Paul tells us this in Ephesians chapter 4, verses 22 through 24. Put off your old self, which belongs to your former manner of life and is corrupt through deceitful desires, and to be renewed in the spirit of your minds, and to put on the new self, created after the likeness of God in the true righteousness and holiness. This takes time. But we can learn to see and recognize distractions and, and roll by them, or to remove them, or to spend time with someone in scripture to learn better how to navigate this. This is what church is about. This is what the family of God is about, is learning how to starve the distractions that take away from my responsibilities. Since Jesus has died on the cross for you and for me, we don't have to worry about earning our way to heaven by doing these things, by doing the commandments and the other things that God would ask us to do. So now that you're free, you're free to love your neighbor. And so the question comes up, how can I do other stuff when I'm just doing the first commandment? That's how. Because in Christ, you are made new in Christ's likeness. And now, though he doesn't need your, your good works, your neighbor does. And so we live looking for opportunities to serve and care for our neighbor. So those distractions before now can be opportunities to serve. And then we learn how to navigate them when those old difficult challenges come our way again.